I'm here with Patty Arms, EMS Program Manager at TUV Rhineland. Thanks for joining us for this Q&A session on ISO 14001-2015 tonight. You're welcome. Good to see you. Good to see you as well. We've had a lot of questions come in lately on this topic. Uh, a lot of people want to know, you know, what's kind of going on, what to expect, so we'll get right into it. All right. First question. What are the most significant changes from the two standards? There's been a, a lot of changes. The ones that I'd like to focus in on is first the introduction of the Annex SL. This is, this is really big. This is probably the biggest thing that's happened since the 9001 was originally written and 14001 came along. So moving forward, all of the standards that will be revised uh, from 2015 on, which would include the uh, 9001, which just got uh, uh, revised, as well as any other standards such as the uh, OSAS 18001 that's morphing to the 45,001 sometime in 2016, they're all going to look the same. They're going to have the same high-level structure. This is the Annex SL, and they'll have the same core elements. And what this does is it makes the standards a lot more amenable to integrating if you have two or more management systems that you want to have under one management system umbrella. Also, they're going to have common terms and definitions so that everybody's speaking the same thing, except, of course, where you would have uh, individual uh, definitions that would be specific to the technical area, uh, quality versus environmental. The other thing that's, that's new is that uh, the standard introduces the concept of life cycle thinking. And they don't ask you to do a full life cycle analysis uh, it's, it's a lot less formal than that. What they're looking for is that you at least consider the risk of your aspects and impacts which you have control or influence over uh, beyond what happens in your fence line, within your fence line. And this is, if you're an environmental, you're, you're familiar with the concept of cradle to grave thinking. And this is similar to that except that when it deals with your products, they start back with the raw materials, the supply chain, uh, and goes through transportation and all and, and all the way to the disposition of your product. So they want you to think about that and consider it. Again, this is not a formal uh, LCA, life cycle analysis. Those are the two things that I think are, are the most significant. Of course, there are others as well. And how long after the standard is released before registrars can issue certificates for the 2015 version? Well, every registrar has to go through a, a, an approval process with their accreditation body, with TUV Rhineland North America, of course, we're with ANAM. And uh, we, in, we anticipate to have our plans approved uh, by the end of this year, which means we'll be able to start issuing certificates in early uh, 2016, uh, right after the first of the year. And a lot of people are wondering how long they'll have to transition to the new edition. That's a good question. The standard 14001-2015 came out on September 15th of this year. And the, you, all of the clients will have three years from the date of publication in order to transition. So if you have a certificate, uh, it will end as of September 14th, 2018. Most of the people that we've talked with, our clients that we've talked with, are planning on transitioning sometime, maybe late 2016, certainly by the end of 2017. However, if there is someone that is transitioning in 2018, anyone that is audited in 2018 will need to be audited to the new standard. And is there anything that TV can do to help assist people, um, certified companies with this transition? Oh, sure. Our goal is the same as their goal. We want them to transition as seamlessly as possible, as painlessly as possible. And so we've developed some tools that we think might be able to help in that process. Uh, we have developed an executive overview that your auditor can provide. Uh, it's about a three to four hour session, depending on questions, uh, that we can actually add on to your next uh, audit, uh, that regularly scheduled audit or we can arrange this at another time or perhaps as a webinar under special circumstances. 
And this really is where your auditor will go into detail of what the changes are and what an auditor is going to be looking for to be able to approve that you have gone through the transition. And I do want to make sure that, that our clients realize this is not consulting. We're not going to tell you how to do it, but we will tell you what is required and what, what our expectations are going to be during the transition audit. We're also developing a readiness review uh, where we can go in and do essentially a gap analysis. If uh, the client feels that they've gone through and done what they can, think that the, they think that they're ready, we'll come in and we'll check to see where there may be any potential vulnerabilities or any of the changes that may not have been uh, addressed adequately. And that also can be added on to the end of an existing audit or we can come out. And that's typically uh, about a day uh, gap analysis in order to do that. Um, this will help you to focus on those areas that are still left to be addressed. Uh, and we also are, are developing informational webinars and we'll have a webinar that is uh, sort of a, 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 an executive executive overview and that'll be a little bit lighter than certainly the executive overview which will be much more in depth but it'll give you the highlights and the summary of uh, what the changes are so that you can start preparing uh, for at least understand what it what is expected of you in the transition. Great. Well, Patty, I'd like to thank you for being here and, and answering just a few questions. And uh, sure. we look forward to hearing more from you uh, in the future. Okay. Thank you.